Welcome to Take 5, your five-minute inspirational message from Solid Rock Drogheda. My name is Nick Park and this is a series we are running called the Biblical Game of Thrones. We're looking at the kings and a couple of the queens of Israel and Judah and uh, looking at all the politicking and the shenanigans that went on behind their, the, the throne and yet how in the midst of all of that politics, God was at work bringing his purposes to pass because God is sovereign and he brings things around, even even evil things, he brings them around to his plan. And today we're looking at a king who's quite well known. If you've uh, heard any preaching about Elijah, you've probably heard about King Ahab. Now Ahab was a king of the northern kingdom of, uh, of, of Israel. He was the son of Omri and uh, well, the Bible gives a line about him that we've heard before. This will sound familiar because the same line was said of previous kings that Ahab did more evil in the eyes of the Lord than any of those before him. And he did. They had done worse than any before them and he did worse than any of them. And the, the huge sin that is identified each time with these evil kings is idolatry. Now that might seem strange because when you look at the life of Ahab, he was guilty of so much more. Uh, he allowed horrible sacrifices of children to take place to Molech during his reign. Uh, he, was, he was a murderer, he, he was a cheat, he was a thief, he, he was a horrible person altogether. So why does God zero in on idolatry? Well, the reason is because idolatry was the worst sin that an Israelite could ever commit. Why? Because other sins could be forgiven. Why could they be forgiven? Because of Israel's place as God's covenant people. Now, Israel had the law. And, you know, sometimes we think the law was this thing, well, you had to obey the law in order to be saved. And if you disobeyed one single bit of it, that was it, you were going to hell. But that wasn't how it worked with the nation of Israel. Prior to the coming of Jesus Christ, they were looking ahead to Jesus, the sacrifices, the covenant, even the law itself looked forward to the coming of Jesus Christ. And the law was a mark. If you had the law, if you tried to keep the law, even if you didn't keep it completely, it was still a sign that you were one of God's chosen people that was looking forward and putting your faith in the Messiah that was to come. But if you committed idolatry, that was basically walking away from your covenant relationship with God all together and worshipping a different God. And so that's why idolatry was considered the greatest sin of all. And Ahab was an idolater. Now, now he was encouraged in that by his wife, his wife Jezebel, who we could say a lot about, but we're going to give her an entire take five to herself because she deserves it. Not deserves it because she did anything good, but because she did a lot that was bad. So um, Ahab was certainly led into a lot of his idolatry by his wife, but his life intersects so much with Elijah that Elijah, it was Elijah who went and confronted confronted Ahab and said because of the sin that Ahab was committing and allowing in the land that there would not be rain in the land until Elijah gave the say-so. And we know through then that it was three years later after Elijah had had that massive confrontation with the false prophets on Mount Carmel and called down fire from heaven that God sent rain. That was so three years. But the New Testament tells us that actually it didn't rain on the land for three years and six months. So when Elijah went in and confronted Ahab, it had already been a drought for six months. And he was basically saying, I'm the reason there's a drought because I've prayed that God would do what his word says and bring a drought to bring this nation to repentance. Now, uh, Ahab's, you know, his final confrontation, as it were, with Elijah was to do with Naboth's vineyard, where Ahab wanted to possess a beautiful vineyard that belonged to Naboth. And uh, he, he basically allowed his wife Jezebel uh, to, to, to commit a horrible crime, which we'll talk about in our next Take 5, where, uh, where, where Naboth was falsely accused and was put to death. And uh, because of that, Elijah confronted him and he said to Ahab, he said, you are now going to be destroyed, you and all your household by God, because of what you've done. This is the last straw. And Elijah said, in the place where the dogs licked up Naboth's blood, the dogs will lick up your blood. 
And that is literally what happened. Now, Ahab did cry out and repent before the Lord, and God mitigated the sentence slightly by saying he would not allow all uh, Ahab's family to be killed and destroyed until after his death. But it did happen when he died. And uh, he went to battle. He was hit by a stray arrow. Just a random arrow hit him. He bled out to death in his chariot. And his soldiers took the chariot to a pool, which is known as the pool in some area where the prostitutes used to bathe. And there uh, they washed the chariot and the dogs came and licked up the blood that was dripping down from the chariot as they were washing it to fulfill the prophecy uh, brought by Elijah. Truly a shameful end to a king with dogs licking his blood from his chariot as it was washed at the pool where the prostitutes used to bathe. A, a, a sad end, but an end that was richly deserved because Ahab abandoned the covenant of God. And I pray that today we will remember that our covenant and relationship with God is the greatest thing in the world. May we treasure it and keep it and never dream of abandoning him or walking away from our faith in Jesus' name. God bless you today. Join us again tomorrow for another Take 5, your five-minute inspirational message from Solid Rock Drogheda.